Hi there, today I'm going to start painting the uh, Little Stuart 10V steam engine and uh, then I'll do the final assembly. So to prime it I'm going to use this um, Acid 8 etching primer. And I used this on the uh, Stuart S50 and it seemed to work pretty well. Now where I can I'll spray. So on the standard I've just put a piece of this aluminium bar in here, this scrap piece and uh, hopefully that will protect sort of the inside. Um, likewise on the base. Now on the sole plate uh, I think I'm going to have to paint it because what I don't want to do is to take the bearings off because this turns ever so nicely and it took me quite a while to get that right. So um, I think what I'll do is I'll just spray some of that acid A into a, a little bowl or something and then use a paintbrush to paint. Likewise, probably the flywheel. Well, that seems to have worked out okay so far. Now for colour, I was thinking about going for a maroon. Uh, but I've changed my mind and I'm going to go for the standard Stuart colours. Uh, the black and green. Well, the paint I've used is this Humbrol enamel, and the green is AQ0040, and the black is number 21. And in the end, I decided to uh, just hand paint it rather than spray. And I used this little brush here, and it's a, it's a flat brush, and uh, it seems to work really well, you know, for going round the wheel and stuff like that. Um, I think the green will need another coat, and maybe the black, but uh, so far it's looking alright. Well the hand painting seemed to have gone okay, um, but I've had a bit of a problem with this aluminium bar that, that I put in the standard. And what I should have done, I think, is taken the bar out after doing the priming. Uh, but I left it in when I was hand painting the green, and when I pushed it out, it sort of dragged a load of green paint uh, onto the inside of the standard. So what I've had to do is um, use some Humbrol thinners uh, on this bit of rag and just done that gently uh, just to remove any excess green that's inside the standard. Uh, but it seems to have worked out okay. So I've uh, found uh, some 6BA uh, nuts and bolts um, that I got from BA Bolts a while ago. So I've used a couple of those uh, just to bolt down the box bed onto this piece of wood. Now um, for the sole plate I reckon that these studs need to protrude round about 12.8 millimeters. Uh, I've done a bit of a test fit and the uh, bolts on top or rather the nuts on top um, look to fit okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these out again and use a bit of this Loctite 243 to secure them in place. Uh, but I'll do that off camera. Okay, so uh, before I uh, took this little engine apart, I uh, made some notes and also took some photographs. Now, I know that the short end of the crankshaft is where the eccentric goes. So that actually means that the cylinder is going to go that way around. Which then tells me that the standard needs to go that way around. And um, I also noted that the conrod, the hole on the where the little end is, um, the threaded bit, goes to the side where the eccentric strap is. Um, and I also uh, made a little mark uh, on the on the side where how to match the big ends at the halves up of the big end. So all I need to do now is to just take that apart, put it in there, tighten it up and uh, see how we get on. Okay so um, the big end turns nicely on the crankshaft so happy with that. Um, now the piston rod um, I've not marked which way round it goes 
which is a bit unfortunate or if I have I can't see where it is so this will be a bit of trial and error so what I'll do is I'll, I'll attach it to the little end and I'll um, put the standard on uh, together with the uh, top cover well so far everything turns nice and freely until I put this gland nut on and then everything gets extremely tight um, so I'm going to have to open that hole up a bit and it's also reminded me that I need to put some little notches in here so I ended up opening up this centre to four and a half millimetres and I think that's um, addressed the tightness issues um, now what I need to do now is to cut some little sort of grooves in here six grooves round um, so I've, I've got it on the rotary table and I've got um, a three millimetre end mill here and um, it's over the edge by about one and a half to two millimetres um, just so I'll go around 60 degrees at a time just cutting it out probably see there um, I've put a little spring washer between the cover and the nut so now I need to turn it 60 degrees Well I'm uh, really pleased the way that nut's turned out, really happy with it and I tidied up um, the rough edges using um, this set of Velourb um, mini uh, files uh, these were recommended by a couple of people and I must say I'm really happy with them uh, vast improvement in uh, terms of what I had so what I need to do now is um, put some um, packing in here some graphite yarn and then assemble it and uh, I'll do all that off camera but so far uh, without the graphite yarn in there uh, I, still get, I still get very good movement so really happy so far. Well, I really struggle with uh, this graphite yarn, but I've managed to sort of put some in here, a few sort of curls of it. I've still got a hole through the middle. So the plan will be to just screw that on very lightly, just so I've caught the thread and then fit it onto the uh, standard so after a lot of fiddling around I've uh, managed to assemble it okay with the graphite yarn and I've um, tightened up the um, gland nut so it's uh, looking pretty good so far so I've just used um, some Loctite to fix the um, piston to the piston rod and just place the cylinder on loosely uh, the studs are in place and I'm just checking that the movement's fine and it is so what I'll do now is I'll just take the cylinder off 
and I'll put some um, graphite yarn um, around the piston in the groove. Um, that is an eighth of an inch by an eighth of an inch so hopefully it will fit. Um, but I'll do all that off camera. Well I uh, managed to uh, compress the graphite yarn into the groove um, so hopefully I'll be able to uh, fit the cylinder. Well I really struggled with uh, that thick graphite yarn and uh, I ended up um, having to use this thinner stuff so I just wrapped it round in, into the groove about three times so hopefully that'll be okay. Um, I've put, uh, well I bolted the bottom on and uh, bolted the top and uh, it turns very nicely uh, so it's now just a matter of putting the uh, valve assembly on. So the valve assembly is relatively straightforward. Um, I've uh, attached the chest very loosely, um, put the gasket behind it and put the slide valve in here and it's a matter of before connecting it up is adjusting this so you get an even amount of movement between the uh, top inlet and bottom inlet so having made that adjustment I'll just try and connect it up just by turning the eccentric. The eccentric isn't attached um, yet so put the bolt in and now if I just turn the eccentric because it's loose on the shaft I'm aiming for an equal amount of space at either end um, when it overlaps the inlet uh, ports. If I can get down to see that. So it just about exposes all of that inlet port at the bottom. And it just about exposes the one at the top. So I think that uh, that setting is correct. So now it's just a matter of um, setting the correct position for the eccentric. So um, the idea there is um, just as it comes to top of stroke it should expose start to expose so the bottom inlet so if I set that there so if I tighten it up so we go to the bottom of the stroke and it's just starting to expose the top inlet. So I think that's okay. So I'll put the cover on and we'll uh, give it a try. Well I don't know, uh, I've just realised that uh, I've got the valve chest on the wrong way around. The um, inlet um, is on the same side as the exhaust which is not what I want. Um, so what I'll have to do is just take it off, switch it round and uh, recheck the timing and uh, then I'll get back to you. Well one job leads to another. <laughs> Well this is uh, the little engine finished, finally. Uh, a couple of things I haven't done 
is uh, put the cylinder lagging on. Um, I thought I'd admit that this time round. And uh, I've not painted the inside of the valve chest cover there to highlight the S. Um, I thought that'd be a bit too difficult for me. Uh, but apart from that, I think it's it's all okay. Uh, I did put some um, gland packing um, under the gland nut for the valve chest, and uh, we'll give it a try on uh, on air. Ticks over quite nicely. Very happy with that. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for the help and support and advice provided. It really is very much appreciated. Without it, I'd have uh, struggled a bit making this little engine. Um, but, uh, you know, the final result I'm absolutely over the moon with. I'm really dead chuffed. And it ticks over extremely well on air. Um, if I ever get the chance to uh, get it to run on steam, I'll do a separate little video showing that. Um, but uh, I'm well impressed and uh, I hope you'll like it.